Welcome to the Head to Head Challenge. Today we are in Rotterdam with People Minded Media. This studio is today the place to be for the finalists of Miss World Netherlands 2023-24. The Head to Head Challenge is to test the skills of interviewing and the knowledge of the young girls. So, if you want to see all about them, we have Team Orange, White, Blue and Red. Of course, these are also the colors representing the Netherlands. Are you ready to face them? Hallo, mijn naam is Charlien. Ik ben 26 jaar en ik kom uit Schiedam. Mijn hobby's zijn dansen, schilderen en koken. En ik heb heel erg zin in dit traject. Hallo, ik ben Boeket. Ik ben 21 jaar oud. Ik kom uit Rotterdam en ik vind het super leuk om actief te zijn op social media. Verder wens ik de andere dames heel veel succes. Hey, ik ben Masja. Ik ben 26 jaar en ik kom uit Vlaardingen. En ik vind het onwijs leuk om in mijn vrije tijd buiten de natuur te zijn. Ik ben ook een kunstenaar, dus ik teken en schilder regelmatig. En je kan me ook, vooral door de week, in Rotterdam vinden wanneer ik salsa en chat aan het dansen ben. Want dans is wel echt een van mijn grootste hobby's die ik heb. En voor de rest wil ik iedereen heel veel succes wensen in het finale traject. En uh, misschien zie ik jullie binnenkort. Doei doeg! Welcome Team Orange. We just saw the introduction, so we already know who you are. And we're going to talk about your beauty with a purpose to begin with. Bukit, tell us a little bit about your beauty with a purpose. Hi, I am Bukit. My beauty with a purpose is SDG 3. Uh, <laughs> Mental <laughs> health. Mental health and well-being. And SDG 17. So Masha, and actually, those three girls are having the same SDG. Mental wow. health. Yeah, yes. it's Excited. true. So, so Masha, tell me a little bit about your mental health project. Yeah, my project is uh, all about depression um, at younger uh, age. So uh, the young adults and also the teenagers. So yeah, what I did was first of all doing research. What is depression? What is standing in a DSM-5? Um, so I studied for it also, and then I was uh, looking for how can I send, uh, while giving information, the knowledge to a bigger public. So I did it to do yeah, some interviews in the newspapers, but also on the radio, and I already did a podcast about depression. Wow, excited to see it. Cheyenne, for you also, SDG3, tell us why. Yes, um, well, I chose SDG 3 uh, about mental health and specifically uh, burnout um, um, because, um, well, I know how it is to have um, a little bit of stress and mental health uh, problems because I have experienced um, a lot of uh, sickness in my family some years ago. And also, some years ago, I was not in the right place. I was not happy at work. And that's why I was uh, very stressed. And I started studying about improving mental health. And now I am very passionate to um, teach others this. Because you know her very well, Amber. Yes, I you do. You started to track with her. Yes, last year. Last year, right. And then you got this burnout going on, and then you pulled back from the competition, but now you are back. Yes, definitely. So, second season for her. Yes. How excited are you to see her back? I'm really excited and I think that it was a strong decision for you to make to stop and then come back. So uh, I'm really proud of you. So, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so this is about your beauty with a purpose, but we also uh, teach each other about strong women of the past. You have been given a list of 21st powerful women. And I choose two for you to talk about. The first one we're going to talk about, and maybe a second, we will see, is... What do you think? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Virginia Woolf. So this lady is quite a lady because she experienced a lot. And you can 
actually relate her experiences also to an SDG. Which one? Also mental health. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because what was her experience? What happened to her? Well, she came out of a large family. Um, she was born in 1882. And in 1895, her mother died. Yeah. And in the next 10 years, also her brother, half-sister and father died. So it was a really depressive episode for her. So she was really struggling. But what was the struggle? What happened to her? Do you know, Bouquet? Yeah, she, uh, yeah, she walked into a river and, yeah, like, die in the river. Yeah. She killed herself. She played suicide. Yeah. But what was the background, Cheyenne? Can you tell us something about that? Um, yeah, no, she had a lot of losses in her family and eventually she couldn't cope with it. Maybe she coped with it in a way by writing because she wrote a lot of uh, impressive books where she was also talking about um, emotions a lot, which was very new at the time. For the personages, she went very deep into interpersonal aspects, such as deep emotions, switches in emotions, and very elaborative um, explanation about a person's um, yeah, emotions. And everything. She also had some half-brothers, br uh, and they did something to her. Are you aware what they did to her? They committed sexual abuse towards her. Yeah. Is it something that you can rely on to the society of today? Is it still happening also in the Netherlands? It's still happening. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Are you aware of that? We are. Do you see that back yeah. in your SDGs? Is that on your path in your projects as well? Like depression? Yeah, in A my lot of project it is. Yeah. yeah. Because uh, depression, it can happen to anyone. Um, also different kinds of situation uh, that can happen that you fall into a depression episode. Um, also with sexual abuse. So, yeah, it still happens uh, in the society and more than you think. Yes, behind closed doors, a lot is happening. Yeah, and, and very much in small circles. So with uh, circles in the kind of family and friends. Yes. Most of the time it's uh, someone they know. Okay, yeah. is it something you're going to roll out in the future into your SDGs as well? Because you have a project of your own. Um, that's something I think the audience does not realize enough, that you have to set up your own project with your own experience. Do you think it's something you have to pick up in your SDG along your path for the future? So, yes, we can pick it up. I think it's better to talk about it, like for everyone. Yes. Yeah. And another lady, a very powerful lady out of the past is Cleopatra. So who is she? A clay potter is a uh, yeah like she, but people see her like a god of Egypt, and uh, well, she was a powerful queen. Yeah, and powerful. Yes. yeah at a young age, uh, she already um, yeah ruled the Egypt. She was twenty one uh, when she had an own army, uh, an army out of Syria. And she spoke also very different languages. So she yeah. was high intellectual, she was beautiful, um, but also leads a whole, yeah, Egypt. Yeah. 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 And she was also the wife of two Roman emperors, Julius yeah. Caesar and Mark Antony. Two <laughs> powerful them, men. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, How she did she manage those two men? Because as you said, she, yeah. they were quite powerful. Exactly, yeah. She was very strategic. Uh, woman, uh, very intellectual, and she, I, I believe she had some kind of uh, power play moves that she played, so she th had a lot of thought in her actions. So if you relate that to women empowerment, because she also has four children that we know mm -hmm. of, that they have track of, so how can you relate that, a powerful job, lead a whole country and still have a family? Can you relate that to yourselves for the future? Yes, that's incredible. It's really, yeah, I look up to her, to be honest. Yeah. If I see like having children and work and private life balance is really a difficult, of course. And then also being the queen of Egypt must be like, 
really tough Massive. Uh, job. So yeah. yeah, she's definitely an example to me. Okay. For sure. Is that the same for you too? Yeah. Yeah, of course. But also what I admire in her is that she also educated. So there was a big library in Alexandria. That's where she also lives. Uh, it's the most finest uh, library in that time. And yeah, she educated there and also learned a lot, uh, like different languages, but also how she can manage things. Like um, she built a system that the economy there will be stabilized, but also about democracy. She managed democracy there. So yeah, she really was a powerful woman. What about you, Amber? Because past year you had also uh, the head to head and you had two ladies to talk about. Do you still remember? I remember uh, one lady. I had Tamara uh, de Limpica. Yes. <laughs> it was very excited, right? Yes, it really was. And I was really nervous, but also excited at the same time. But at the end, uh, it was like, oh, it went very, yeah. Really what well. did you learn about all those women that you had to study and look at? And because they were powerful ladies that meant something in the past, but still are actual today. Um, that if you want to bring something to the world, you can start and you can yeah, have your own things and also be a mom or go to work and have all those things together and still be a perfect or yeah, wonderful woman. The theme of this group is poorness. Poorness. So we are going to ref reflect that in the Netherlands, the poorness. How is it to live in the Netherlands? Well, um, you wouldn't think it, but a couple of percentage of the um, of the people in the Netherlands is actually very poor and below the um, below the level below the line poverty line. Like the standards. So it's only a couple of percent, but it's eighty, hundred and thirty thousand people still. So that is a lot, and they are suffering from financial, emotional, but als also uh, social exclusion. They don't have homes, food, uh, shelter, and also less access to healthcare. So I looked this up, and it was really shocking to me that in the Netherlands there's still a lot of poverty. Well, poverty is something yeah. that came very across and among us after that we all experienced the period of COVID, because before that it was a lot lower. So how do you think it happened that it's now sky high in the Netherlands. A country as the, as the Netherlands, you should expect that everything is good arranged for everyone. So can you tell us something about that? Like, like some people lose their jobs and can't find a new one or like they want experience, yeah, like it's also um, a little bit about COVID. Uh, a lot of things were closed, like restaurants, but also sports. So most of the owners, um, yeah, they got a fine investment. Uh, so they didn't got money from, uh, yeah, the customers. So that's why they're also, yeah, not in the guild. Um, yeah, that they had to stop their own company uh, because of the money, but also uh, the war. Russia and uh, Ukraine, uh, the gas prices are going sky high um, and it's still going on. And that's also something that uh, most of the people are dealing with. And, and a lot of families who have uh, some children wants to have a warm house in the winter and with the sky high prices, yeah, they it's can't afford it. And yeah. also, yeah, with the supermarket, the prices are very high. If you want to buy something you yeah you pay the double at this yeah. moment and do you expect to the future that it will get better that the government will have a closer look and make it more impossible uh, possible not impossible excuse me but possible for the people eventually yes it says something that's not going to be in one year and i'm thinking about maybe 10 years because you can't get money out of the sky yeah, so I hope they're going to come with a plan for it. And what would the message be towards the audience worldwide? About uh, raising money or something? No, not about raising money, but to society, you know, to have a better situation for everyone, not just in the Netherlands, <coughs> but worldwide. 
because poverty is not only here. Most of the countries do think that it's very good in the Netherlands and all is good arranged, but you know, the backside is different. Yeah. So what would the message be to the world and to the people of the Netherlands? We also have a housing crisis, so that is really a big thing going on in the Netherlands right now. Um, and there are some things starting up to help. Uh, for example, uh, like myself, I just came from school and I would also like to look for a house, but it's very difficult. Uh, but they have some kind of loans and things like that, so they are working on it, but it is really a crisis. And my message to the world would be um, look out for one another and think about not everyone is as wealthy as maybe as you think and just keep an eye on the ones around you. Masha, you want to add something to that? Yes, of course. I agree what Sayana is telling and also your nearest neighbor. You can always check how are you doing and also are you getting around because not everyone yeah, is getting money inside. Maybe uh, they're dealing with mental health uh, what cause that they can't work at this moment so just check up how are you doing and if you have at home something uh, you don't use i mean like pasta or just milk you brought but you're not going to use it check if someone else wants yeah can use it just look out for each other okay book it yeah i yeah i agree with the girls just help each other like yeah stand with each other like that's something you did very well when Turkey was in need yeah, with the earthquakes yes yeah. you did a lot yeah for Turkey Syria Morocco and Afghanistan I help so yeah four countries yes you did a lot we're proud of you thank you, thank you so much ladies it was quite stressful you are the first group so I understand it was quite a bit yeah. but you did very well <laughs> be proud of yourselves thank, thank you. you so much for this and from now on ladies and gentlemen Get on the socials, vote for them, because one of these girls is going to compete within two days on the big final, 24th of October. And one of you will compete against someone of the other groups. Who will it be? Stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, you saw the teams. They are amazing. Didn't you find the same? Now it's up to you. You have to vote on one of each team. The winner of each team will be facing each other the 24th of October. And there, they will do the final test and there we will find out who the winner is of the head-to-head -head challenge. So, ladies and gentlemen, now we need you to get your votes done. Under the, the videos, you can put your vote by putting the name of the finalist and then we will count who will be the winner of the Head to Head Challenge. So ladies and gentlemen, now it's up to you.